In this video, I will talk about an important feature of the convolution operation that we come across in signals and systems, uh, a feature that usually gets overlooked by many students and hence uh, not applied or understood well enough uh, when being applied to other concepts like modulation and so on. So uh, I'll talk about the particular feature of convolution in this particular lecture. And to begin with, let's uh, see the basic definition of convolution is given by this expression. Uh, this, so the convolution between two uh, discrete sequences, uh, x of n and h of n is given by this expression, which we are all familiar with. And uh, what we're going to do is, uh, the important feature here is that what happens when we convolve a discrete sequence x of n with uh, the unit sample function delta of n. Uh, what is the result of this convolution? And this is a fairly simple result, uh, which if remembered, can be used to solve a lot of problems in signals and systems and can be applied uh, to other aspects of engineering where convolution uh, is, uh, is applicable. So what is the result of this convolution between uh, any sequence x of n and the unit sample function delta of n defined by this uh, expression over here? So uh, the basic uh, rule here is that uh, the convolution between any sequence and the unit sample function uh, happens to be the sequence x of n itself. So that means the uh, unit sample function delta of n is the identity for the convolution operation represented by this star. So just as we have uh, the number one as the identity for the uh, multiplication operation, so that means any anything multiplied by one results in itself. So that's the, that means the number one is identity for multiplication. Similarly, the number zero is the identity for addition. Anything added to zero will result in itself. So uh, similarly, uh, uh, the unit sample function is the identity for the convolution operation. That means anything convolved with the unit sample function delta of n results in itself. So x of n convolved with delta of n is equal to x of n. And this is a very uh, simple and very useful result which we can use in a lot of uh, calculations in signals and systems and signal processing. And in other aspects of uh, engineering where convolution is applied, as I mentioned before. A similar uh, argument applies uh, to the continuous time convolution as well. So what we have shown here is the convolution operation for the discrete case, for the discrete time case. Uh, similar things apply for the continuous time convolution as well. So the convolution in continuous time is given by this expression, by this integral. And uh, just as in the discrete case, the convolution of a continuous time function x of t with the unit impulse function delta of t will result in x of t itself. So that's, that means uh, delta of t, the unit impulse function in continuous time or the unit sample function in discrete time is the identity for the convolution operation. So the unit sample function in discrete time, delta of n, or the unit impulse function, as it is called in the continuous time, delta of t, is the identity for the convolution operation. So let us see this uh, working on a uh, discrete time signal plotted. And uh, we have here a discrete time signal uh, given by this uh, function uh, x of n which is going to be convolved with the unit uh, sample function delta of n. And we see that the result of the convolution, x of n convolved with delta of n, which we call as y of n, happens to be the same as x of n. So we get this uh, to be equal to x of n. So we clearly see that the, this function x of n and the result of this convolution, they are identical, which proves the point that uh, the delta of n is the identity for the convolution operation. We can illustrate this further by considering an LTI system.
uh, which takes some input signal x of n. So suppose this uh, x uh, input signal x of n uh, is applied to this LTI system, which has a certain impulse response, uh, if you can call that impulse response as h of n, and we get some output y of n. So we have input x of n applied to an LTI uh, system having an impulse response h of n, which gives an output uh, sequence y of n and uh, let's say that the LTI system is an identity system right if it's an identity system that means the output y of n uh, is equal to the input x of n so y of n must be equal to the input signal x of n and uh, we know uh, the relationship, the general relationship between the output and input of an LTI system is given as y of n, the output, is equal to the convolution between x of n and the impulse response h of n. Now, if this output y of n is equal to the input signal x of n itself, then what does it say about the impulse response h of n clearly for this relationship to be valid x of n convolved with h of n to yield x of n uh, it has to be that h of n the impulse response of the identity system must equal the unit sample function so we can say that that is uh, h of n is equal to the unit sample function delta of n so uh, we see that for an identity system the impulse response happens to be the impulse itself and that should be the case because it's the identity system the impulse response must also be an impulse impulse response is nothing but the output to the LTI of the LTI system when the input is a unit sample delta of n so when the input is delta of n the output also has to be the same delta of n that's when you can call it as an identity system so uh, the impulse response of an identity system is equal to delta of n and that is when we have uh, this relationship that anything convolved uh, with the uh, unit sample function results in itself uh, which means that the unit sample function is the identity for the convolution operation so it is clear now that the convolution uh, of any signal with uh, the unit sample function or unit impulse function in continuous time uh, results in the same signal itself and uh, we can take this one step further by considering the convolution with the shifted impulse function or the sh uh, shifted unit sample function. So just as we have the convolution of any signal with the impulse or sh uh, unit sample function to be the signal itself, what happens if we perform the convolution of a signal or discrete sequence x of n with a shifted version of the unit sample function, for example, uh, the unit sample shifted to the right by 2. So uh, that means we have an impulse at n equal to 2 and everywhere else uh, the value of the signal 0. And what does that produce? Now, what we find that the, the result of this is that uh, the convolution with the unit sample results in the, uh, the original signal x of n as itself and convolution with the shifted version of the unit sample produces the original signal also shifted in the same direction and by the same amount as the unit sample. So that means uh, x of n convolved with delta n minus 2 will give us x of n minus 2. So convolution with a shifted unit sample function uh, results in the original signal also shifted in the same direction and by the same amount. So in this case, uh, the example here is showing a shift to the right by 2. So x of n convolved with delta of n minus 2 produces the same x of n shifted to the right by 2. Or similarly, 
uh, we can say that uh, if the signal x of n is convolved with a left shifted version of the unit sample say n plus 3 the result will be the signal x of n also shifted to the left by 3. So we see this illustration over here where we have the signal x of n convolved with a shifted version of the unit sample function. So the impulse here is at n equal to 2. Uh, so that is right shifted by 2. And the convolution of x of n with a right shifted version of delta of n. So that is basically uh, delta of n minus 2. The way it should be written is this is delta of n minus 2 so convolution of x of n with delta of n minus 2 uh, results in x of n shifted to the right by 2 as well so clearly we can see here that the uh, y of n sequence here is the same as the x of n se sequence which has been shifted to the right by 2 so the sample which is at n equal to minus 1 has moved to plus 1 the sample which is at n equal to 0 has moved to 2 uh, and the sample which is at n equal to 1 has moved to 3. So each sample has been shifted to the right by uh, 2 uh, indices, right? So uh, convolution of uh, any sequence with uh, a shifted unit sample function results in that sequence being shifted in the same direction and by the same amount. Uh, similarly, we can see an illustration for the left shifted version as well. So we see here the convolution of x of n with the left shifted version of the unit sample. That is the, uh, uh, we have an impulse here at n equal to uh, minus 3. So that is basically this is delta of n plus 3. So the convolution of x of n with delta n plus 3 produces a, a y of n which is the same as this x of n shifted to the left by 3. So every sample that you see here, the value which is at n equal to 1 has gone to n equal to minus 2. The value which is at n equal to 0 has shifted to the left by 3 and come to n equal to minus 3. And the value of x of n which is at n equal to minus 1 has shifted to the left by 3 and come to uh, n equal to minus 4. So we get uh, this to be equal to x of n plus 3. Okay, These are uh, very basic results and basic observations related to the convolution operation. But these can be applied in a very useful way to solve uh, various problems in signals and systems and also uh, when applied to the analysis of uh, uh, other aspects of engineering like communication or uh, in, in communication for the purpose of modulation and also to establish other properties of uh, Fourier transforms like the modulation property of Fourier transform and the convolution property of Fourier transform and it, con it, it is also uh, applied in the analysis of uh, the conversion of uh, uh, you know, bandpass signals to baseband signals and so on. So these kind of equations will, you know, will be uh, seen in various aspects of engineering analysis. And if we are familiar with these relationships and understand this uh, feature of convolution and understand the fact that uh, the unit sample function or the unit impulse function uh, is the identity for the convolution operation, it will uh, make our analysis and calculations a lot easier and help us understand these things better, which uh, many a time uh, I come across many students uh, missing out these um, uh, minor details and uh, having some confusions as to how to certain steps have evolved in their analysis. So it is important to remember these basic fundamental relationships. And a similar kind of uh, relationships also apply for the continuous time case as well. So we see here, just as we have in the continuous uh, discrete time, that the convolution of any uh, signal with the unit sample gives back the same signal. In continuous time as well, when we convolve any signal x of t with the unit impulse function delta of t, we get the same x of t. 
and convolution of the signal with a shifted version of the unit impulse function produces the same x of t shifted in the same direction and by the same amount. Uh, the only difference between the discrete time case and the continuous time case is that the, the amount of shift here in the continuous time case can be a non-integer value, whereas if you notice in the continuous time case, the shift here is always integers because the x-axis values uh, on the uh, for the discrete time signals take on only uh, integer values as their indices. So therefore, uh, in discrete time, we have these shifts only with integer amounts of values or integer amounts of shifts. But in the continuous time case, uh, it is okay to have non-integer values as well for the shifting. So to summarize here, uh, convolution of any signal with the unit uh, sample function of the delta function results in the same signal. And convolution of a signal with a shifted version of delta produces the signal itself shifted in the same direction and by the same amount as the shift in the delta. Okay? Uh, these can be uh, very useful in uh, various aspects of uh, analysis in signal processing, communications, and so on.